Hey there, I'm Ken. This is Canadian Retro Things. Welcome. Today, I am making a beginner's guide to the TRS-80 Color Computer 1 or 2. So you've been playing around with that emulator and you decided, hey, I actually really like the color computer. And so you went out to a thrift store or eBay or somewhere like that and you got yourself one. So you have that Coco 1 or that Coco 2 sitting at home. What now? Well, today I'm going to give you a beginner's guide to a little tour around the outside and the inside of the computer. I'm going to show you a few of my favorite ways to hook the computer up to a couple of different types of TV sets. And I am going to show you a few of my favorite ways to get games into the computer. And we can't do that without first bringing out a couple of computers. But before we do that, I have to give a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. One thing about owning retro computers and game systems is that they require maintenance and sometimes repair. PCB Way can help in many ways. Check out their store to get the tools and supplies you need to maintain your retro equipment and even design replacement or upgrade parts for it. You can also check out the shared project page. You may find that somebody has already designed the replacement or upgrade part you're looking for. PCB Way, home of the $5 for 10 PCBs deal, offers a lot more than just PCB printing. And here I am with my Coco One and my Coco 2. Now, as you can see, the Coco 2 is quite a bit smaller than the Coco 1, but all of the uh, places you have to plug things in and buttons and everything are all the same on both computers. So let's take a closer look here and have a little walk around the outside to get to know the outside of your color computer 1 or 2. So looking at the top of the computers, you can see that the keyboards here are slightly different. Um, the Coco One originally came out with more of a chiclet style keyboard, and uh, that's the most common ones you'll find. This is the Melty Key keyboard on the Coco Two. Um, but other than the uh, keys being different, the layouts are exactly the same. And of course, the colors of the computers are different. Uh, the original Coco One has this uh, kind of uh, gunship silver color. Uh, it did come out with a beige color at the very end of its run, but uh, I don't have one of those. And if you look on the side of the computer here, they both have cartridge ports. And the back of the computer has, as I said, identical inputs and everything. So they both have a power switch. Then your left and right joysticks. Your serial I.O. port, which you would hook up a printer or modem or something like that through there. Your cassette port. So uh, if you have a cassette drive, you can hook it straight through there. Channel selector. 4 or 3, 4 or 3, out to the TV, this would be through a coaxial cable, and then you have reset buttons. Other than that, they both have cords coming out of the back because they have internal power supplies. So that is basically the outside of the color computer. So how about we have a look at the inside now. And here is the Coco One open. This isn't the one that I showed you originally there. This is my other Coco one. Uh, the one that I showed at the first part of the video actually has never been opened. So I um, didn't open it today. But this one was open and ready to go. As you may notice, it's got a few extra things on the board that are not standard. Now you will find that a lot with color computers because, well, they were sold by a company that offered parts for electronics hobbyists so a lot of people did modifications to their computers um, just to point out here somebody added a um, 
LED light to this one for a power light and two extra switches on the side. There is an extra reset button and an extra power button so you don't have to be reaching to the back of the computer for those. Uh, this extra little board right here, pay no attention to it. It's another project I am currently working on, but let's take a look at what is the interior on the interior of this board. So obviously you've got your keyboard and it's plugged in right at the front of the board here. Right here is actually the power transformer for the uh, computer. So color computers do not use exterior bricks. They are built in. That's one of the nice things. You will notice there's a funny bit, bit of tape on the back here. Something you often find on these older computers because they're often saved from recycling places. The recycling places will usually cut the cord off right at the uh, whatever the uh, electronics unit is. So that's easy enough just to, uh, uh, you know, add another cord onto there. So you've got obviously your power button and your reset button here and your uh, inputs for cassette, uh, serial and joysticks. And let's see, of course your cartridge port. Those are the more important things and for chips here We've got your RAM chips are all right up at the front here. Your ROM chips are back here. So that's your extended basic and your regular basic. Uh, your 6809 is here. Although in this one, I have a 6309. Um, your uh, PIA for um, controlling peripherals and whatnot and uh, controlling your IO devices. And back here is your display generator chip. So there's also a few others that may go wrong, but generally these computers are built very well and the uh, there's not a lot of uh, chip failures on them, but it does happen. And here is my Coco 2 open. Um, very much the same parts as the Coco 1, just much more compact. Again, self-contained uh, power source, your uh, plugins, your RF, reset, power. Um, so right up in the front here, you have your RAM chips. Your ROM chips are back here. So your extended basic and your regular basic. Uh, your 6809 is right here. I have not changed this one over to a 6309 yet. I have to pick myself up one of those from probably Retro Rewind. I'm going to be seeing him at Coco Fest though, so hopefully he'll have some 6309s I can buy off him there. And of course, just like the other one, you got your cartridge port to the side here, and you've got over here your display generator, uh, your I.O. port control, your PIA. So again, this computer like the Coco One, which I didn't mention, um, is nice because most of the chips actually are socketed on this. Haven't gotten to the point yet where Tandy started getting a little bit cheaper and just soldering everything directly to the board. So the earlier Coco Twos and the Coco One, really, really nice to work on because, yeah, you don't have to um, desolder most of the chips to change them out. Let's take a look at a few ways that I hook these up to TV sets. So I have here basically three solutions for hooking your computer up, your Coco 1 or 2, up to a TV set. Now the first two here are basically the same. This one is a coaxial to RCA adapter which would go into the back of the uh, computer. As I showed you when we were looking at the outside of the Coco 1 and 2, both of them have the input that takes this RCA style um, input. So you would plug this into the back of the computer, RCA into this, or uh, coaxial into this, and coaxial into the coaxial input on the back of the TV. This one is a RCA to coaxial. So you would plug this to the back of the TV and then you could uh, 
plug an RCA style um, plug into there and then into the back of the computer. So let's look at this one in action because this is the one I use the most. The simplest thing to do if you want to get your Coco 2 or Coco 1 running quickly is to pick yourself up an old CRT TV. These are generally dirt cheap from places like thrift stores. I think I paid a dollar for this one and then I picked up a second one that same day and they threw it in for 50 cents. So for a dollar fifty I picked up two CRTs. So not too bad. But of course they are big, heavy, and take up a lot of room. So if you're using the coax to RCA adapter, the first thing that you have to do is plug your coax cable into the back of the TV. Once that is plugged in, then you go to the back of the computer, plug in your adapter, and then plug your coax cable into that adapter. Once that's done, it's ready to go. Of course, just do the opposite if you're using the other adapter. The adapter goes into the back of the TV, and then you use an RCA plug cord to go into the back of the adapter into the computer. So, the next thing you do is turn your TV on, tune it to channel two, three, or four, depending on what you have uh, your computer set to. Turn it on and boom you're ready to go. There we go the Cocos are running on a good old-fashioned CRT. Unfortunately that's all I have time for today but join me again next week when I'll be hooking these computers up to some more modern TVs as well as showing you a few ways that you can get programs onto your color computer so that you can play some games. Or, I guess if you really want to, do other things than play games. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what you can do with the liking, the subscribing, and the commenting below, because anything and everything you do is always greatly appreciated. So, tune in next week for part two of this video, and I will see you then.